I try to take advantage of those glitches that have been happening on the exchanges, on the centralized exchanges. They had one in Binance, they had one on Coinbase, they had one on Gemini, I think it was, where the price would suddenly spike to something ridiculous. Like we've seen prices of about $22. There's a time that even went over $1,000 in one of these glitches. So I decided to place some orders at these ridiculous points just in case they execute it. I mean, why wouldn't anybody want to take advantage of these glitches when they happened? So I went into Binance and tried to place um, an order for to sell XRP at $100. Just, you know, just to see, right? I thought maybe $100 would be a very popular place that a lot of people would be at. So there's probably a sell war around that anyway. But then I was blocked, right? So the system blocked me and wouldn't allow me to put an order at $100. And it's the first time I've ever experienced such. I don't know if it's because of the recent changes that they brought in in the UK. Now we've been put in these buckets where there are now some things that you're not allowed to do that you were allowed to do. And maybe there are people who say are allowed to do those things. Maybe if Rupert Murdoch or maybe even Gary Gensler himself decided to go in and buy some XRP or sell some XRP, there aren't any restrictions on how much they can buy or sell. So already now we're experiencing, if this is true, of course, uh, what I call trade apartheid, where we're being segregated into little classes of what we can and can't do. Now, this is a big problem with centralized exchanges. While on one hand, they provide a large platform to easily trade your tokens with relatively low fees. I know a lot of people think that exchanges, uh, centralized exchanges charge a lot of fees, but if you compare them to decentralized exchanges, especially when you're dealing with ERC-20 tokens, when you have to pay these giant gas fees, they do provide that service. They're much faster, you can respond quicker, the fees are way lower than the gas fees that you would otherwise pay on decentralized exchanges. The flip side, of course, is that they've got full KYC, they've got full reporting to your tax people. I mean, that's the legal, legally right thing to do anyway, that's fine. But also, they're able to cap you and control you and say what you can and can't do. And it's only getting worse now as the governments clamp down on them and put pressure on them from above. They are clamping down on people using the exchanges. So you have this apartheid system where you can do this, you can't do that, this is what, you, you know, we can block you and everything. And a little bit of experience also from the previous bull market is that sometimes when some action would happen and you would try to get in and get a, a trade in, if you weren't already logged in, you wouldn't be able to log in because of congestion or, you know, suddenly your two-factor authenticator email thing doesn't work or some, some other hurdle is placed in your way just to slow you down and drag their feet a little bit so that, of course, the people with the fire hose access, the massive organizations, they can trade directly from a third party software. They have no problems. They can get in, get the good numbers. And then when the top, the blow off top is done, then they let the masses in to pick up the crumbs. Right. And even if you had an order, if they permitted you like they did, like I think I would have been able to put this order in at the last bull run because I did have those kind of orders in some of which were actually executed, surprisingly enough. Um, but back in those days, which is you know, those days of two and a half years ago, three years ago, um, there were incidents where people would put orders, orders in and those orders just wouldn't execute. And the, the, uh, the theory and the excuse would be that the system was congested or whatever, it just didn't execute. Sometimes they would execute and the orders would get clawed back and reversed. It, you know, this kind of glitches, chances are people that make, you know, accidentally sell XRP at $100 today, the trade will probably be reversed and you'd get an email from the exchange saying, oh no, this is a glitch and invalid. And if you, if you read the terms and conditions of these uh, exchanges, first of all, you realize that those tokens aren't yours, those tokens on their exchanges, even though you're the one, so you're the one that put them there, actually belong to the exchange, not your keys, not your crypto. That's the first thing. The second thing is they're well within their right to do any of the things that I just said. They can cap you, control you, put you in pigeonholes and buckets. 
they can execute or not execute your orders, not legally bound to do any of it because again, it's their tokens. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind when depending on centralized exchanges, Binance, Coinbase, Gemini, what have you. Unfortunately, decentralized exchanges aren't that much better either. At the moment, they're awash with scams and all sorts of things. So you have to be extra careful when dealing with centralized exchanges. The one benefit that centralized exchanges also had was the lack of KYC. And unfortunately, one of the largest decentralized exchanges, Uniswap, has basically said that they will be implementing KYC. Now, it's not a general blanket KYC program. It's sort of on a person-by-person, trade-by-trade, order-by-order basis, but it's a slippery slope. And I can imagine once that is implemented and once they show that they're able to implement it, the powers that be can put a foot on their neck and basically get them to implement it across the board. I actually have something else to say about Uphold. I'll talk about that in the next video. Not financial advice, do your own research as usual. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.